Hi, welcome to episode 355, I believe, of The Corner of Knit and Tea. I knew I forgot to check something. <laughs> My name is Laura. I'm also known as a Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. And I have an Etsy shop where I sell my hand spun yarn and knitting patterns. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, December. Wow, I'm really going for broke today. Monday, December 6th, I believe. <laughs> and I hope that you are having a wonderful week so far. It is about three o'clock on Monday afternoon. It is overcast and gray and properly cold here. When I checked the thermometer to see about running out to the Mohawks, it said 30 degrees. That's Fahrenheit, that's chilly, that's just below freezing. Um, and I think it's going to stay that way for quite a few days this week. So maybe winter is here. I know technically it's not quite winter yet, um, but we are definitely experiencing it. Last week we had unseasonably warm temperatures, um, but but this week it might be time. I don't know. You, you never know. The weather could change and it could warm up again. <laughs> So I hope that you are doing well. We are doing well here. We spent the past weekend mostly hanging out around the house because we had not been home in several weekends. Um, we did some chores, we did some cleaning, I did lots of knitting. My husband is knitting on his blanket and trying to finish that before he has to go back to work. Um, and so we are busy, 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 but we found some time to just kind of chill out and relax and catch up on a little TV and things that we missed and um, generally not work too hard. So um, yeah, that's what we have been up to. Today I'm drinking another of my holiday themed teas. Uh, I, I confess I bought this a year or two ago and actually never even opened it, um, but I am drinking from Simpson and Vale today. I am drinking their Saint Nick tea, which is a black tea that has almonds and um, organic cacao nibs and vanilla and some orange flavoring. Um, so it's kind of a nice holiday blend and I am drinking it in my ever so funny foul language mug with all my um, birds that have um, slightly odd sounding names and this is one of my favorites. It was a gift from a friend. Oh, that's really good. I do get a little bit of the chocolate and the orange. That's nice. That's really nice for the afternoon. And, and what's actually really nice is I don't generally like chocolate flavored teas, but this is super subtle. It's just a hint. It's not trying to be chocolate chocolate. It's just got just a little taste of it. So that's pretty good. Okay, so let's hop into what I have to show you. I actually have a finished object this week. These just flew off the needles, but I finished my hand spun socks. So, for these socks, I used David uh, Schultz's Toe Up Sock Cookbook. It is a great recipe. Basically, what you do is you take measurements of your own feet and you do a gauge swatch for measurements, or in my case, you knit a toe, um, and you see where you're coming out at, and then you um, plug and play with your numbers into his little, um, he just has a little sheet where you put all your numbers in and that tells you basically how to knit the pattern. So it is a toe up with a gusset and heel flap sock. Um, and I really like it. Uh, I confess that my favorite way of knitting socks really is um, top down. But the reason I like toe up, particularly when I'm working with hand spun, is because I like to use every bit of it. This is also useful if you only have like a 50 gram ball left and you want to make sure that you get um, even socks and you don't run out at your toes. Um, it The pattern can be used for anything. It can be used for commercial sock yarn as well. I generally don't use it for that um, just because I have a better idea with commercial sock yarn where I'm going with things. Like I don't need to work out my gauge and how many rounds and how soon I should start the heel and those kinds of things because I kind of have a better feel for it. With hand spun, it can always be a little dicey if you don't spin to exact gauge or if you're a little variable. So um, it's a great pattern. It is a freebie. I think it is only available on Ravelry. Um, so I am sorry about that. Um, I downloaded it years ago, so I've just been using it ever since. Um, but these are my socks. The hand spun is, um, 
a, a Cory Dale from Hello Yarn, um, and I believe it was a club colorway. It was called Grumpy, and I spun it up, and you will notice the socks are quite different, actually. Um, I, my friends were joking last night at knit night that this is kind of the party sock, and this is the, the introverted sock, so I definitely got a lot more color in this sock, both at the toe and then in the cuff, and um, I got a lot more browns and a little bit of purple in this sock, but they are, they are a nice set. Um, like I said, they are definitely definitely fraternal and I don't mind at all. Um, I uh, was pretty sure I was going to make them into socks even when I spun it, but I did not spend a lot of time planning how to spin it so that I would get to um, equal socks. If I really wanted to do that, I could divide the fiber up at the front end and um, weigh it very carefully and then try and spin it um, so that the plies were the same and honestly I just don't put that much thought into my spinning a lot of times I just kind of do whatever the fiber wants it to be um and I'm not very technical about it so um I end up with uh with fraternal socks. Um, but I am very happy to have those to add to my sock drawer because, like I said, it is properly chilly today. Um, and that is a skein of hand spun out of the stash. So I realized that, um, so my sock drawer overfloweth. Um, it is really, really full. I'm not sure how many more pairs I could really technically cram in there. Um, part of that is I think I should go through and I should pull some out and donate them because there are a few pairs that I just don't wear that often um, because the drawer is so full. And so I probably could um, send those out to live at other homes. Um, but at this point, even though I still have a ton of sock yarn in the stash, I'm just not knitting socks for myself that often. Um, but I really love hand spun socks. So I think I actually may put another pair on the needles in December and I will share that with you shortly. Um, but that is one finished object for this week. Um, so I worked on a couple other things this week. One of the things that I worked on is it's not a sample knit, but I'm knitting it for a knit along. I am uh, one of the teachers for the Zen Yarn Garden knit along for the honeycomb, the painted honeycombs blanket, which is by Stephen West. You may remember I knit a super big one much earlier this year, um, which was a kit for the, um, the knit along. And um, for the knit along, I decided to do the smaller version. The Painted Honeycombs Blanket comes in two sizes. One is a large size that is large enough to block on a block on the top of a double bed, so fairly large. Um, and then there is a smaller baby blanket size, or um, I suspect it will be kind of a lapkin size. And I opted to knit that one. Um, to go along with the knit along. I just didn't have it in me to knit another um, huge blanket. I don't remember the yardage that it took, but I'm gonna say it was like well over 2000 yards and I just, I didn't have that in me. Um, so, well, maybe not quite. Uh, yeah, no, that much. Um, so <laughs> I selected a subset of the colors that are being used in the um, the full size kit and I am working on that and I got through a couple pattern repeats this week and I am loving this. What I did is I selected the dark teal. Um, I, if you've been watching me for a while or you saw my photos or you go back through my Instagram, um, the previous one that I made had a um, kind of medium gray, kind of a pewter um, as a uh, background color. And then all of these other colors as um, foreground or bright brighter colors. And I picked the brightest among the sets. So I picked kind of the hot pink color, the petal pink color, the um, orange, the yellow, and then one of the, there was kind of a more greeny blue and a more bluey blue, and then this, um, the teal. So I picked that subset. The only colors, I'm, I'm missing the gray and I'm missing the red. And no, there's, oh, and the greeny, the greeny um, teal. So I, I called it more of a jade color. I know she, Zen Yarn Garden gave these official names and I do not um, remember any of them. <laughs> so you can check out the kit if you're interested at Zen Yarn Garden. Um, they still, I believe, have the kits available. You probably could still pay to join the knit along even though we've already started. Um, and we are having another meeting this month. Um, the deal with the knit alongs at Zen Yarn Garden is they come with a certain number of um, private Zoom uh, meetings where you can ask questions, we can go over technique, or we can just chat and share. Um, and those are recorded and then you can access them later if you have purchased the knit along. Um, so the deal is that you buy the kit for the yarn, which includes the yarn and the pattern. And then if you decide to take part in the knit along, um, then you um, pay just a little bit extra. I want to say it's like between $20 and $30 extra to join the actual knit along. 
So that's what I'm working on. Um, I'm probably going to put this aside for a little bit. Um, this will be a project throughout the year because we will also be meeting in February and April. So I see no reason to um, rush through it right now and I have other things that I would like to work on. So um, you'll see this on and off throughout uh, 2022, at least through the beginning of 2022. Um, but I worked on that a little bit this week so that I'm ready for our next meeting. Um, and I'm just really, really happy with the way it is coming out. Um, I have actually woven in most of my ends. I haven't clipped them yet because I'll wait till after I block to do so. Um, this one is a big uh, ends <laughs> ends project. There are lots of ends to weave in on this one. Um, and I will tell you that um, Stephen West has a tutorial called the Weave and Stephen um, that teaches you how to weave in your ends. Um, I actually prefer to weave them in with a tapestry needle. So I have been doing that and um, I'll just keep up with that every repeat or so. Um, and I still have a ways to go on this, but I'm excited for it. It should be fun. And for now, I'm going to keep this one. I don't have a baby in mind. I'll probably keep it as a lap gan. A lap -gan. You'll see it behind me um and then I don't know if I get a special baby in my life maybe I will let it go maybe I won't I don't know I kind of coveted the last blanket that I knit but I wasn't ready to knit another huge blanket again so we shall see but that's this project and you will like I said you will see that on and off this year I am sure or this coming year so the third project that I have on the needles, I only got a very brief start on this week. And I should say that technically there is another project behind the scenes. I'm finishing up a nitpick sample. It definitely will be finished this week, but I've been working on that, but I can't show you that. So I have also been trying to crank out some work on other projects so that I can show you. Um, so the other project that I have here is I am working, I cast on a hat for my sister out of that beautiful yarn. I think I shared with you last week, we went to, um, we did a little yarn tourism when I was in Chicago. Uh, Knit One Chicago is um, literally around the block from my sister. Like we walked all the way around the block and found the shop. Um, and when we were in there, um, my sister had asked for a new hat. And so I um, sent her to the worsted Erin bulky weight section and told her to uh, pick out a skein of something that she liked. And what she picked out was, let's see if I have the, I do, was Kelburn Woolen's Lucky Tweed. Um, and this is the label right here. And it is 100% merino wool, 210 yards, 100 grams. Um, it's listed, I believe, as an Erin weight on Ravelry, um, and uh, it is in this deep burgundy colorway. I can't remember what it's called. Let me see if it's on there. It is called Mulberry, um, and it also has a little bit of, a, it's a little tweedy. Well, it's called Lucky Tweed. It's tweedy, and it has, um, I don't even know if they're neps, but it has just little bits of color spun into it. Mostly I'm seeing hot pink, but I also see a little bit of yellow or green. I don't know if you can see that there, but you can see it's got some little bits and bobs of other colors in there that make it really, really nice. Um, what I did for this is I went looking for a hat. And as it turns out, uh, in 2020, Kelburn Woolens uh, produced a, um, it was a year of hats. And every month they released a new hat pattern. Well, it might have been 2019. I think it was 2019. Every year they released a new hat pattern. And at that time, it was for one of their new yarns that had come out, which was called Germantown, which is um, also a uh, wool yarn and also an errand weight. So I went and looked at all those patterns because they're lovely hats and they're free. Um, and I think I settled on the February hat, but I can't remember. I started with the October hat and it was coming out too big. So I went back and picked a slightly different hat. Basically, it is a cabled hat. Um, and I have just the beginnings of it, so not a ton to show you, but I went ahead and did the ribbing at the bottom, and as you can see, I am just getting started with some of my cables. I think I'm about five rows into the pattern, and the chart is probably 40-ish rows, so I'm really not very far into it at all, um, but this is on my list this week to, um, to maybe finish up and so that I can get that off to her. It is not a Christmas present. It was just a, she asked for a new hat and we were there and there was a yarn store. And so I suggested she pick out um, her color and um, her only request actually on this hat was usually I put big pom poms on my hat, on, on the hats that I give. And she loves the big pom poms, but she was like, could I have a hat without a pom pom? Because um, I want to wear it under my coat. 
coat hood. So um, I will be making this without a pom-pom um, and uh, hopefully finishing that this week and getting that off to her just so she can have that because I'm sure it is starting to get really cold in Chicago. Um, but so that was that was the project that I cast on this week um, and did not did not get super far into. So um, my knitting is at a little bit of an odd place right now. Um, once I finish the Netpick sample, I actually don't have any more samples here at the house. Um, I'm sure more will be coming. In fact, I know some will be coming. Um, I know yarn is being dyed for one of them right now, but I don't actually have any sample knits right at this moment. And so I was trying to decide what I wanted to do. And um, there are a lot of little small projects that appeal to me right now. So I think what I'm probably gonna do is end up doing some small things to sort of finish out the year. Um, and then probably towards January, um, well, I'll probably get one of the samples in before Christmas. Um, but towards January, excuse me. Oh. I'll take a fresh start um, with the new year and start on some new samples and some new projects. I did receive the yarn for my mom's sweater. As I mentioned when I was with the family, everybody had requests for things. My mom requested a sweater and so probably my next big cast on will be that sweater. I'm going to be knitting, um, I haven't decided exactly which one yet, but I'm going to be knitting a sweater by Hohi Locatelli in her fing in fingering weight yarn. Um, my mom determined that that was sort of the, um, the best match for her and I just have to go back and pick out which um, which cardigan? I did the um, Girls' Night Out cardigan. I think it was Girls' Night Out or maybe just Night Out cardigan. Um, and that was potentially a contender. And then there were a few others that my mom had noted um, that she liked. And so I will just be picking one of those. So other things that I might cast on this week include... I can't remember if I showed you this last week. Um, when I bought all the skeins for my sweater, um, for my Nanny Swaymo sweater, they came from Apothecary Fiber, which is this. And I can't remember if I showed you this, um, but I had bought a... Um, I had bought four skeins for a five skein sweater. Yes, that was my bad. Um, and then I was able to procure a fifth skein, but I wasn't sure if it would go well enough. So I ordered one in the matching colorway, but of course it's indie dyed, so you never know. And I ordered one in a contrasting colorway in this gorgeous deep pool. I think I did show this last week. Um, I have a friend who's expecting a baby. I'm gonna do another uh, bonnet and booties set. And so I'm gonna wind this up this week and hopefully get some good work in on that. So we have the hat and the bonnet and booties, finishing up the sample. Um, and then the last thing that I might get started on this week, if I have a chance, is um it is <laughs> i think ahead i think a lot ahead part of that is that i have anxiety disorder and part of that is that i'm a planner and i like to plan um and so i was realizing i started a tradition uh when roxy was born that i send a small valentine's day package and um the first year or two i just sent like one year i sent a little stuffed heart and one year i sent Oh, I don't even remember. Like, it's a really small package. It's a little bit of candy. It's um, something knitted and a card. Like, it's not it's not a big um, to do. But um, with the year Miles was born, I sent socks for both of them. And I've been sending socks ever since. So um, it occurs to me that February 14th is really is I mean it's two months from today so I'm really I'm not trying to rush things but at the same time if I need to knit two more pairs of socks um I gotta get that on the books too so I decided while I was knitting small projects and kind of cranking things out um I have this gorgeous skein of yarn I don't remember what this was called it was from a um sample that I did for Zen Yarn Garden and I had quite a bit left over basically I had to break into the second ball to finish it um and so I decided it's a very um it's a very warm colorway. It's got um, chocolate browns and a little bit of red in it. And I thought it would be good for like chocolate and Valentine's Day. I thought it was kind of thematic. And so I'm gonna knit a pair of socks for Roxy in um, this leftover. I probably will not have enough to knit a pair of socks for Miles and I have another idea for him a skein that I need to pull out and find um, because technically it's sort of a Christmas related skein. So I was thinking about breaking into it and knitting him his socks this month. Um, it is a um, it is a skein from Wooly Wonka Fibers, which sadly is no longer dying. Um, and it was in her Whoville colorway. So I thought it was kind of fun, Grinch inspired for Christmas, but it's a skein that's like red and orange and yellow and um, a couple other colors. Um, so it's not specifically a Valentine's Day color, but it's not specifically a Christmas color. I, I mean, it's a Christmas themed color, but it's not red and green. It doesn't look 
Christmas. So um, my thought was that maybe I'd break into that and do a pair of socks for him out of that. And then later I can go back and do a pair of socks for myself out of that because that's technically why I bought it. Um, but the kids' feet are the kids' feet. The kids' feet are still at sizes um, that I can get a uh, pair of socks for them and a pair of socks for me out of the same skein. So this is the leftovers of a skein from Zen Yarn Garden. It's their super fine fingering um, and I will be um, working on a pair of socks for Roxy. I might get those cast on this week. If I don't, it's not a big deal. Um, one of the things that I talked about that I pulled out and I haven't decided precisely when I'm going to start is I talked about finishing these hand spun socks and kind of having a love affair with hand spun socks and I realized that um well so I was thinking about a variety of things one of them is that every year on Christmas Eve Little Bobbins Knits um who is Danny does a Christmas Eve cast on and I have participated though not officially I haven't posted I haven't done a ton of stuff but I've participated um pretty much since she started it and usually what I do is I cast on a pair of socks on Christmas Eve, and then usually I finish them partway through um, January. And a lot of times if I don't get a chance to get to my Christmas yarn skein for that year, I go ahead and knit Christmas socks, even though if I cast them on on Christmas Eve, they won't be done for Christmas. I might have to wait a year to wear them again, although I don't really subscribe to that. You can wear Christmas socks at any time. You can wear Halloween socks at any time. Anyway, I was starting to think about what I wanted to cast on and I had this skein of yarn and blah, blah, blah. And then I was thinking about, oh, I really want more hand spun socks. And I realized that I spun um, a skein that I, <laughs> I've been telling people is aggressively Christmas colors. I don't know that it's aggressive. It's definitely bright. Um, some of you who were with me last year might remember it that I spun this skein of yarn. It is crazy bright and the monitor's blowing it out, I, or at least my screen is blowing it out. It is red and green and then it's got almost a little bit of where the red and the green meet and so it kind of turns a little purpley um, and it's like neon green and it's got a little minty green, minty bluey green, but this is a crazy bright skein. This was a skein of, um, I believe it's Superwash Merino, that I got from Nitty and Color, um, who dyes fabulously bright colorways, um, and I just love her um, fiber. And I don't remember how much yardage I got, I'd have to check, but for whatever reason I didn't put it up in the shop because I decided I might want to save it for myself. I should double check that. I should make sure it's not in the shop, but I'm pretty sure it's not in the shop. And so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to knit myself a pair of Christmas socks. Um, they are, like I said, aggress I'm going to call them the aggressively Christmas socks. Um, and I am going to work on these probably starting on December 24th. If I can wait to cast on till then, if I can't, I might cast on sooner. We'll see. I have, I have a bunch of small knits that I'd like to get through this month. And um, I also would be happy to knit um, some more hats. I do have a bag of worsted and DK weight scraps um, that are leftovers from things that I have knit throughout this year. If you remember last year, I kind of got on a crazy hat knitting kick through Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, and I knit a whole bunch of hats for charity that I then gave away this year. Um, and so I have been putting aside all of my um, DK and worsted weight scraps this year so that I could do more hats because I was mostly out of, had tiny little balls of things, but I didn't have anything like really to work with. So I have a whole big uh, Ziploc bag full of bits and bobs that I would like to turn into some hats that could do some people some good. So um, my thought is I'm going to work on bits and bobs this month and this is going to be a cast on that I will let myself cast on at Christmas. Um, I may get, you know, I'll do my Christmas Eve cast on with these uh, with these socks and I'll get more hand spun socks out of the deal even though they'll be crazy crazy bright. You'll be able to see them from outer space. Um, and I... We'll work on a few other things this month, see if I can crank out some hats, and then plan to start over in January with a cast on for a sweater for my mom, maybe some new samples, and um, yeah. So that's kind of my plan for the next few weeks. Um, I think I'm just ready to have a few um, quick finishes and knock out a few things, use up some stash, um, knock a few projects off my to-do list. Um, so I just have a lot of little bits and pieces. So I think that wraps up knitting. For spinning, I don't have a ton to show you. Um, I did finish the singles for a spin for a friend of mine. It was something that I started right before we left, um, and I know I showed it to you. It was sparkly blue fiber from... Um, uh, uh, 
I think it's called Art and Fiber Club on Etsy. It's Nicole of the Harveyville Collective um, and the Harvey, sorry, the Harveyville Project. Um, and she's the one who does yarn school. And we had all um, sort of purchased some fiber from her and I had offered to spin it for a few friends in my knit group. And so I am working on that. Um, and I got all the way through the singles and went to ply and the drive band on my handsome mini spinner broke. Um, and I went through about 10 minutes of maybe thinking I could fix it um, because the drive band on your wheel is um, usually a rubber, um, uh, a rubber band, not a rubber band, but a rubber, um, uh, a rubber, not a rubber band like you would put around a sheaf of papers, but it is a rubber cord. <laughs> that um, fits snugly around usually the um, big spinning wheel on your um, on your spinning wheel, the big wheel, and then also on the whorl, which determines um, sort of how how many um, revolutions you are making per, per spin of the big wheel. So I know that's kind of a, I didn't really look that up and, and get you the best turns, but the drive band sort of controls the relationship of when you treadle the big wheel, how many times does the bobbin turn? That actually is an accurate representation. So, and, and when, you treadle, when you treadle the big wheel for one rotation, how many times does the bobbin actually rotate? Is sort of the way that that works. Um, anyway, so you can't spin without a drive band because you need the tension on there. Um, and drive bands wear out. They are plastic or rubber or polyurethane or some some amalgamation thereof. Um, and I had actually already replaced or, or repaired those drive band once before. Um, basically, uh, drive bands become worn out. They stretch out because they are rubber. Um, and sometimes they, um, they break. And because there's always a join somewhere in the loop. Um, and the last time that happened, I was able to cut a little bit away and then I melted a little bit. I took um, a lighter and melted a little bit of the tip of the rubber so it was a little wet and gooey and I stuck it back together and let it and held it there for a few minutes and let it dry and it was perfect it was good as new um this time there were two problems one was that the join that I had made last time was not I mean it was not perfect it was it was a little off um and so when it broke I needed to cut away even more of it and I wasn't even sure that it was necessarily going to go back to fitting around the wheel um but the other thing that I noticed was that the band was kind of yellowed um I think that's the only band I've had on that wheel and I got that spinning wheel I want to say in the 20 teens sometime and I'm talking like 2013 2014 so that's been a lot of years with a small rubber band on my wheel um so I went ahead and ordered a replacement but that is the wheel that I ply on and um I could ply on my treadle wheel but the last time I plied on my treadle wheel I actually wasn't happy with the result because I have been plying on my Hanson mini spinner for so long that I did not um, enjoy what I did on the treadle wheel. So I have two wheels. I have an Ashford Joy which I generally spin my singles on right now um, and then I have a Hanson mini spinner which I generally ply on. Um, so the spinning process is a little bit stuck until I get that drive band. Um, I did order it on Sunday Sunday, yesterday, when I tried to ply and it broke and it has already shipped by this afternoon. Um, so I have nothing but praise for the people over at Hanson. Um, however, I don't know how long it will take because um, it is Christmas season and the postal service is fairly slow these days. And so I may be out of commission for more of this week. Most of my bobbins are full of singles. So um, when I get around to starting another spin, I have picked one out. This is called Botany and it is on Ramboulet and it was the August Fiber Club from Hello Yarn. So it's got some burgundies and oranges. It's got a little bit of this kind of gray blue um, and it's got some kind of swampy yellows and then it's got just a little bit right here at the end, a little bit of green almost. Um, so this is a very um, autumn themed colorway. Um, um, and I don't know if this is the appropriate time of year to be spinning it, but I just love these colors and I think this is going to be a gorgeous braid. Actually, some of the colors are the ones that I see in these socks. You can see like some of the orangey yellows and the browns together here. So I'm hoping um, this braid has more mint green than this one does. So I don't think you'll have that in there and there isn't any purple, um, but there is some burgundy. So I th this gives me some of the similar feels um, and this will be available in my shop. However, I do not know 
precisely when, um, because like I said, I'm not exactly sure when I will be able to clear some bobbins and then start spinning some more. Technically, I have more bobbins I could spin singles onto, um, but it's just gonna take me a little while to clear the backlog. So we'll see. <laughs> so that's what's going on this week. So I think that was a long-winded way of sharing not that much with you. Um, I hope that you have had a lovely week that you are crafting. I hope that if you are crafting holiday gifts for others, that is going along swimmingly and you're not feeling too pressed for time. Um, I am so pleased. I, I am mostly done with my Christmas stuff. I need to go buy some uh, lotto scratcher tickets for stocking stuffers, um, but everything else for the holidays, I believe I have covered now. So now I can start to think about February and March and um, things that are happening next year or just sit back and kind of enjoy some small projects. Um, I always say small projects are great for instant gratification because I always love using up a skein of yarn and getting a hat off the needles in just a couple days. Um, it just makes me super happy. Anyway, I hope that you are doing well. I wish you a lovely week ahead. I will see you next weekend or next Monday. And I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.